Are you ready for hibernation? Fear not, we've We've got got you covered. covered. Just have really good kit. It's just about having a good layering system. So layer up. Layer, layer, layer. Start with the base layer. So here's what I brought earlier. So this is an artificial fibre long sleeve. Dries quite quickly when it gets wet. Then I'm also wearing today merino, which is Great because it doesn't smell, so you can wear it a few days without washing. Excellent for long distance cyclists, I think you'll agree. Obviously you will need something to sit on your saddle with, which uh, I find shorts quite helpful for that. Team them up with leg warmers, um, or alternatively... See, I prefer in the winter, I like my long thermal leggings with my bib, because I'm a bit of a cold creature. Yes, and... Easy access to uh, go to the toilet uh, as a woman is quite useful. So I wear shorts that don't have bibs or I tuck in the bibs down the back of my shorts instead of wearing them. I'm quite wedded to the bib. Then go do a marvellous bib with zips. I tend to wear double socks because all shoes are too big for me so I can get away with it. Seal skin socks. So they're actually Mm. waterproof on the outside. I won't wear them unless it's going to be really wet though because they do give you a bit of a sweaty foot. They're not made of actual seal skins. Are they not? No. On your mullet, you should probably wear something warm. These are super, super... Over your ears. That's a, covering your ears is a really... What? Really good gloves, really good foot, foot coverings. Your hands and feet are the most vulnerable parts. Sort them out and that's 80% of the battle. Gloves, super important for me. Overshoes, really important. I'm also partial to liner gloves. Well, I use ones that you can... Yeah, very clever. Yes, you can use mobile phones with them. (laughs) (laughs) Buffs are good. What's wrong with you? I like big buffs and I cannot lie. (laughs) The gloves that I wear are these fishing gloves. Uh, They're not specifically made for cycling. They're made for fishing, (laughs) strangely enough. Um, But they are very good, you pull them on and off, and it has a handy flap um, for when you get cold and it keeps you really nice and warm, but you can still, you still got your Insta finger. So I favour, this is my favourite winter glove at the moment. It's nice and thick, it's got a nice fleecy lining. It's not completely waterproof, but you know, it's been pretty wet today, we've been out for a few hours, my hands are dry. I do like a good lobster glove though. They are super warm and super comfy. Um, as long as they fit properly, which these do not because everything is too big. big. Overshoes. These are um, quite a thin one. They're more about keeping it waterproof or keeping your feet dry. Um, We've got these uh, kind of neoprene type ones. These are well worn, as you can see. The Gore-Tex ones, these are very good in the wet, only up to a point. I think sometimes you just have to realise that you're going to get soggy feet. Yeah, yeah. Just have to try and make sure that they're warm enough. The winter boots changed my cycling life. They keep your feet toasty to minus two, minus three, you've wow. been out. Okay, um, for rain, obviously you need um, waterproof. I've got, this is actually a hiking jacket. I wore this during my year and it was absolutely fantastic. This is mine. It's had a, a lot of wear. It's gore and... This kept me dry, a double brutal. There has never been so much rain come out of the sky, ever. And under this jacket, it was dry. That's amazing. Um, I have also been known to wear these fetching things. These are very handy if you're not going very fast, so you don't get very sweaty, but you want to keep warm and dry. Always pack an extra layer or even two extra layers if you're going out for a long ride, because you never know, it might be freezing fog. It might be, you know, a downpour. Um, you need to put on something dry. Bring as many layers as you can pack. And sometimes you may have to ride in the dark. We like to light up like a Christmas tree. We do. As much as possible. Rear lights, front lights, 
Oh, this is, this is quite good. It's it, it's double sided, reversible. When you're in the dark and the car lights hit it. But here I am. It's very, very good. I use a dynamo on my main bike. You do, I'm a bit jealous of the dynamo. They, it is great. The only problem is if you're going slowly, they tend to fade and flicker which is good you still get you're still seen but it makes it difficult to see i go for rechargeable lights i've got a sort of mountain bike light actually that i kind of have on its dimmest light but it will last it will go all night it's also a good idea to have two or even three lights i think just in case one fails which it yeah. did for you when we well, were out yeah it did so route planning um it can be a bit tricky in the winter. It's a good idea to stay off the small roads when it's icy. If the forecast isn't too cold, then by all means stick to the smaller roads, but maybe plan an alternative route because as we found out as well, there can be roads that are completely flooded. Another thing with your route when in the winter is that you might want to plan in some stops at regular intervals. Now you don't necessarily have to stop, but it's a good idea to know that there's somewhere open and warm just in case. We're not going to say we're experts on looking after our bikes in the winter, are we? Or getting them ready for... <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement. But you know who is an expert? Who? You know. I know. Andy Ramsdale. First thing I'd look at uh, for winter riding is the tyres that you're going to fit to your bike. Ideally you want something that's a little bit wider, give you more comfort, more control, more grip and also something that's got a breaker in there which will help reduce the uh, possibility of getting punctures. So one thing to bear in mind, when you increase the volume of the tyre, so you go to a wider tyre, you also need to look at your tyre pressures. So you may want to reduce the pressure down a little, uh, that will also help giving you more grip. Protecting yourself from the cold and the wet uh, will help you enjoy your ride. So adding some mud guards to the bike is a very good idea. Depending on the bike you've got will depend on what kind of mud guards uh, you'd look at. If you've got bolting or fastenings on the frame, then a full length mud guard like an SKS Crema Plastic or these Topeak ones will do really, really well. They go much further around the tyre, giving you more protection from the elements. Speed Rocker designed for gravel, cross bikes and bikes with disc brakes to get them in situ without having the mounts on the frame. Or you can just have a little flap to keep your chamois dry and gravel free uh, out the back of your bicycle. So when you come back from your ride, chances are you're going to be absolutely filthy. Mock Off make a great range of products. Bike cleaner, I normally hose the bike down quickly with a regular garden hose. Spray your Mock Off across everything, it's bike safe on disc brakes and everything else. Have a good scrub around the frame. Pay particular attention to your drivetrain, your cogs and your chain, get into the links of the chain, repel the water, just make sure you don't get anything on your disc brakes at that particular point, dry the bike off, and then re-lube your chain at this time of year, ideally with a wet lube, ready for it to go out next time. Pace yourself, otherwise you end up knackered, and when you're knackered there's nothing you can do to keep warm. And from there on it gets miserable really quickly and if you're really lucky you end up with hyperthermia or maybe worse um, but I won't worry about that too much because just getting cold can be so miserable you would do anything to get out of that I think most people ride a bit slower in the winter don't you think? Yeah and it's important to, to, take, to keep a steady pace that you can maintain for those longer rides something where you won't get too sweaty and you won't get too cold, so try and maintain that pace. If you go out too hard, as Steve says, then you are you might burn out, and then you're going to end up getting really, really cold, and that can be very, very dangerous. My favourite winter cycling tip currently, put your pyjamas on the radiator before you leave the house. Get yourself a hot drink, keep warm. Get anything wet off as soon as you can. And then wrap yourself in a very warm blanket or dressing gown. I wouldn't recommend getting into a hot shower or a bath straight away because that can exasperate any chillblains yeah, that are. And I have learnt the hard way that if you come in soaking wet, freezing cold and get straight in the bath, you're going to cry.
While you're warming up, before your shower or bath, I think it's a great idea to charge your batteries ready for the next ride because those lights are so important and you don't want to get to your next ride and realize you haven't charged your batteries. Another top tip is a sausage towel. Now, this is very handy for drying your clothes if you are away from home or you're somewhere that doesn't have a radiator. Pack a small like chamois type towel and then wrap your wet clothes in them and really squeeze them to get all the, well, as much excess moisture as you can out of them and they will dry a hell of a lot quicker. So we did a bit of a survey on Twitter. Do you know what we found? What did we find? About a third of you are winter deniers. I utilise a tailway trainer. I managed to fit in really good um, sessions indoors and then you take away some of the danger of ice and all of that kind of thing out on the road. The days are really short in the winter, so it's really easy to fit in some turbo sessions there as well. Another thing that we can do is to flee the country, which I tend to do on a regular basis. You should just does. take your bike, especially if you've got a folding bike like I do, and take it. Or stick it in a box, put it on a plane, go somewhere warm. And if it's too icy to get on your road bike, you can always get out your mountain bike and head out into the countryside. Another good one for winter, a lot of people like to ride cyclocross. Um, great for building your cycling skills, your bike handling skills, and really good for fitness. The key thing is embrace it. You've got to be out there anyway, so you might as well try and enjoy it.